All right, so welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. Time to start playing. Okay, how many predators do you see in that scene? One, two, three, four, five, six. Anyways, all right, time to get the game going. Put your game on. All right, so uh, the path is not set up on these right now, so we got to do one thing here quick. Um, and guides online will come back to this if you don't have access to this later, because we'll have multiple rounds of games, so you can do this later. So first thing I want you to do is right click and on your computer and go to properties. You're going to need to add the path, otherwise you can't play the game. So do this now. All right, then go to the uh, advanced system settings from there. Then go to the environment variables. All right, so advanced system settings, environment variables, scroll down and find path. Then double click on the value. And you need to add in at the very end semicolon c colon slash python two seven. What was that again? So once you're in environment variables, you scroll down to path, double click on the value, then at the very end of the variable value, you put semicolon c colon slash python two seven. And then next you need to open up two command line windows. Oh, and actually I have a file share that I have to share with you as well. Yeah. All right, so we need to get the latest version of the code. So what I want you to do is make a folder on your desktop called LOB. All right, so then as I said, we need two command line windows. So we're going to be running one command line window where it's going to be you just playing for your own purposes to learn the round. How we're going to do this is we're going to have one, you mess around by yourself for a little bit, get familiar with the questions, and then we're going to have a class game where we everybody syncs up on the same questions and we're all going to compete against each other. So you got want one that's going to be your window for just messing around. And so you want to go to, you know, on your desktop, Life of Binaries, Python demo, go into that. And same thing on your second window. In one of those windows, we basically have to install the custom key view library that does parsing of key files that I customized to help make random games. So you're going to need to change the directory into the xenomod p file folder. And then, so Python setup.py install, it should say that it's building and installing and moving it somewhere else. And then once you're done with that, you can just go back to the previous directory. Now you play the game by doing Python input.py. ask you whether you want to do single player mode, uh, single player replay, don't worry about what that is, and then class mode. So we'll just be using single player, and the single player, or sorry, zero and two, we'll be using single player or class mode. So like I said, one of your windows, you should run this as single player, and one of them, you should run it in class mode. And for now, just play around in the single player, basically. Mine says no, no such file. No such file. All right, but so everyone else, just basically run a game like that, do zero, and then start trying to answer the questions. It tells you where the file is. Well, so if, if, if it's just asking a question like this right now that you see on screen, it's basically a fact question. Otherwise, for the next questions, it'll, ask, it'll tell you a particular file that you should open up with PEView and so forth. But this is a fact question. What is the magic in asking? 
yeah, I guess here's actually, well, so since this randomizes, like so when you're doing it single player, it just picks a random, it basically takes the time and uses that as a seed to suit a random number. So you will all be getting different questions right now. You will not be able to copy off of each other's sheets. But just go and try to answer the questions basically. Well, what's the answer for this, MZ, all right? Then it asks me, it says, you know, in Python round one bins, round one q1.exe, how many sections does this binary have? So I'm going to go look that up in the file header somewhere. It's going to have a number of sections. So I can just, you know, take CFF Explorer. I can go to my game directory, like the binaries, Python demo, round one bins, open my file, go to the file header, my number of sections, two right there, six. I would then put six into the game. So you basically need to. Can you to go through that again? I have no idea what, where you went. So, yeah, so this is, it doesn't basically matter uh, which particular file it is. The point is, when you get a question and it says for this binary right here, right, it's going to say for a particular binary, it's going to ask you a particular question. It's going to say, how many sections does it have? And so all you need to do is either use PView or CFF Explorer, doesn't really matter which. And again, those are both on your desktop in the Life of Binaries folder, TSV424. You have PView and you have CFF Explorer. Open up one of them and then just go find that file that it asks you a question about. So open, and then I find my file, and then I need to go try to answer that question based on what the field is. And so feel free to, you know, this is the very beginning. It's all going to be, you know, mishmashed. But ask any questions when you have them. Basically, we're going to do this for, you know, five, ten minutes or so. You just play around on your own. You make sure that you're good with all the questions it's asking. You make sure you're good with opening these different binaries. And once you're good with it, then we're going to move on to a little time challenge round. All right. And here's the thing. See that tab right there? It opens a new file. So, good. Here's the first thing to be careful for. When you open up two files in CFF Explorer, it will open a new tab for the new file. While we're doing the games, and especially during the time challenge rounds, you'll be rushing and you won't realize you're not clicking over to the other tab. See, so when I do this and I open up some other binary, I got two tabs. You need to make sure you're on the tab for the right binary, for the right question. Otherwise, you will get it wrong with high probability. You might get lucky sometimes. But. Yeah, and you can drag and drop into CFF Explorer as well. So basically, it's going to keep calling these the same binaries. It'll call them round one, question zero, round one, question one, so forth. But we're all getting different binaries in this stage. So later on, when we sync up as the class, we'll get the same things and the same answers. But right now, same question, different answer for everybody. This is basically so that you can go off and like you know use this six months from now and you forgot it all. You can quickly refresh yourself on the stuff, right? The big thing is if you get a question wrong and you don't know why you got it wrong, make sure you ask me because otherwise you'll keep getting it wrong throughout the day. And so you probably want to, if you get a time date stamp question, you probably want to open it in P view because that'll interpret it for you if it asks you about the year. CFF Explorer won't interpret the year for you. So you can take CFF Explorer's output and you can go paste it into like epochcalculator.com or something like that and it'll, it'll convert it over for you. While he's logging in, I just want to tell everybody else about the one trick question in here. Some of you may have run into this. There's one question that says, what is the difference between the, you know, what is the, well, what is the exact wording it said? Um, what, what is an offset? There's an offset from the end of the image DOS header yes. to the image NT headers. Right. What is the offset from the end? 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Bill, can I get the video on the board quick? And thank you. All right, that's good. All right, that works. All right, so it said, what is the offset from the end of the DOS header to the beginning of the NT header? So we know that the last field in the DOS header says what the offset is from the start of the file to the NT header, right? So in this case, it says 268. So you go to the start of the file, this is 0 to 268. That's where you get it. But what I'm saying is, what's the offset from the end of this data structure to the beginning of this data structure? So you really need to take this offset minus the end of this data structure. This data structure ends at hex 40 because this last field is 3C, but it contains 4 bytes. So 3C plus 4 bytes means that the last little bit of data of this field ends at hex 40 into the thing. And so you basically always do NT header minus hex 40, and then you'll be able to answer that question. But it's intentionally tripping you up. All right, so we're going to do the class game now. Basically, well, so before we do the class game, I'm going to show you kind of what I expect to see in the game. Um, all right, so we all got our, our game on. So the point is, this game was kind of inspired by this picture over at uh, the Khan Academy. So for Khan Academy, you know, they have many different knowledge nuggets, modules that you can go through. You watch one little video, and then you do like some quiz on, on arithmetic, things like that. It's good for uh, elementary education. This shows. Basically, you know, students on the site, how many uh, modules have they completed? So they watch this video, then they watch that video. And so over time, they just increase the number of things they've gone over. Well, so I wanted to basically see something like this where your scores, you know, will go over time, go up. You know, it'll go down occasionally, and it'll go down at twice the rate that it goes up if you get it wrong. So, so what I want to stress for this next competition amongst yourselves is accuracy and precision. Speed and precision. Speed and precision. So answer the questions fast, because you want to get the highest score in the least amount of time. But you also want to answer, answer them accurately, otherwise it'll go down by 200 and it'll take two questions to catch up, right? So this, you know, is notionally, this would be an example of, you know, how these games are good for, like, just reinforcing your own knowledge. You know, you've had some time now that you can do the questions, you know, over a couple of times. So behind the scenes, there's a little CSV file getting dumped out of your score over time. So it's keeping track of you got plus 100 at this time. You got, you know, now you're at 200 at this time. Now you're back down to zero at this time and so forth. So me, after I like, played my game enough that I you know, wasn't getting anything wrong anymore, which was definitely not the case when I first did it, my first round through um, basically was this bottom graph. So try one was actually this bottom one. So it took me about... 260 seconds in order to finish uh, the first two rounds, for instance. And then the second try it took me about you know, 230 seconds. And then the third try it took me maybe like 170 seconds. Some of this is obviously due to memorization because I was using the same seed each time. I was trying to reduce that by basically going through the motions and opening all the files. So a lot of it was really just speed of like figuring out how to open the files much quicker with CFF Explorer and PView and things like that. This is how I improved over time by, you know, just doing the same stuff over and over. All right, now here's some values from the previous class. So, unfortunately, there was a data collection error in the previous game, so I couldn't get, like, the entire thing. But at the end of the, at the beginning of the second day, we basically, we'd done five rounds worth of material. And so I said, like, all right, day two review is just see who can get through round five the fastest, right? So unfortunately, I could only get the first two rounds of material, but um, but basically this showed us kind of you know there were some people who you know because some of them had some background knowledge, some of them didn't. They just took the material. There's sort of this first tier of people who do it you know relatively fast, and there's this kind of middling tier. And you know sometimes this long gap between you know getting stuff wrong is you know just because they're taking a lot of time trying to be accurate with it. Sometimes long gaps before getting things right is because they ask me to come over and you know answer a question or something like that. But you know there's sort of a middle tier who, who gets it eventually. And then there's the people who are you know struggling with it and that's fine. You know, we're not all going to be proficient at all things in equal measure. But this, this is what you need to avoid. Don't be this guy. Right? There are people who don't ask questions because they get it. There are people who don't ask questions because they don't get it. Don't be that guy. Ask me a question if you're not getting it. Don't stay in negative territory. 
you know, I mean, he did good by the end. He was, you know, asking questions. But the nice thing about this game too is I can now look over your shoulders and see whether you're just, you know, for five minutes in and you're still in negative territory. All right, you're not asking me questions. You don't get it. So again, ask me questions if you don't get it. Don't be that guy. All right, now we're going to do this. We're going to compete against each other. I'm going to give you a seed so that we all sync up and we're all on the same page. And so basically we're going to have our gold, silver, and bronze medalists written up on the board. We'll keep track of them over the day. Um, and actually it was interesting in this class we didn't have the same people winning over and over again. So I mean, kind of among the top like five or six people they were trading spots. So it wasn't like just the top three trading spots over and over. So. Do we have to set up that second DOS window now? Yes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, we've got the second DOS window. So your first one should have been in single player mode. And so Mike, what you're going to want to do is everyone just basically, if you, if you don't have a window that's there, actually I guess I don't have a window so I need to get there. Again. But basically your second window you should have uh, type 2 into it, but you're going to wait for a C. All right, so into your second DOS window, you're going to put two for class mode now. All right, so everybody is waiting, so I'm going to give you a seed and then the timer begins. We're going to go with the seed of 789. You may, okay, here's a possible ah. problem. If you have the other game still running, your your yeah. your own game, yeah. cancel that out because that may be holding a file open and apparently my thing is not able to get around that one holding its file open for some reason. <coughs> okay. Alright, we've got three people done. So basically we're done. done. We've got our medalists. <laughs> All right, so um, everyone, basically at this point, open up Excel. So do run and just Excel. We're going to go look at your log file for your run. And you need to go to File, Open, and then go to your desktop, type the binaries, Python demo. And make sure Excel is set to see all files. And then you want to open basic log file.csv. So what I'm looking for right now, so you're going to have 789, that's your seed, which you were using for your thing. You're going to have the second column is going to be the number of seconds it took you to get, and is the score. So what I'm looking for is someone who is meeting or, or you know, faster than 180 seconds. Is anyone faster than 180 seconds to get to 1,000? 